Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to take your drums from this to this. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit metal drums. So I just got together with the drummer from my band last night, and we just recorded the ending of our new song, Final Mistake. So we're running 11 microphones total. We got a kick in, out, snare, tom high, mid, floor high, overhead left, overhead right, hat, room mic left, and room mic right. So these drums are uncomped right now, meaning I just have all the takes stacked on one another. And I'll show you what that sounds like. So that's the whole ending section right there. This part's pretty technical and it's a cool drum part, so I thought it'd be a good spot to edit. So let's dive into this. So how do we go about comping these drums? The first thing you're going to want to do is put all the mics in a folder and then we're going to hit the group editing button. Make sure that's on. What that'll do is if you make a change to the kick drum track, everything else will follow. So the drums move as a unit. This is really important because we don't want any phase cancellation. If we were to have this off and say I moved the kick in mic a little bit over, then we're going to get some phase cancellation here. So we always want to move everything as a whole. This is why drum editing is typically the most difficult out of all the instruments because we want to preserve that phase. All right, so now we have the group editing button on. What's the next step? Another thing you're going to want to know how to do is how to access the lane feature here. So if I just right click on any one of these tracks and hit track control settings, you want to make sure you have lane display type added. In some instances, it might be over here on the left. You just got to click lane display type and hit add and it'll add it to the right here. And basically, you can see by this little preview down here, it'll add it to each track. So that's this little three square symbol down here. So now that that's on, you can click show lanes and then here's all our takes. So we're not going to worry about the rest of the mics here. We're just going to worry about the kick in. So we can go up here to our comp tool. Then once we have our comp tool, we can just go through and swap out the takes. And you'll see as I'm clicking on these, they'll be reflected up here on the kick in mic. So right now we're on 60. It says 60. If I click 35, it'll be 35. And what that's doing is basically bringing that take to the top so that it's playing. And then the rest of these are underneath it. So if I want 26 on top, I can click that and it'll reflect up here. If I want 19, it'll be up here. 49, it'll be on top. You get the point. So now what we want to do is listen through. I'm just going to solo the drums with the click. Okay, so this takes really good for the most part. This is the last take we did, which typically seems to be the best. But there's a crash part that's rushed right here. As you can hear, that crash hits a little bit before the kick. So you can see that. So what we can do is swap to the take before. And as you can see, all the takes, since we have group editing on, all the takes are going to be swapped out when we swap the take. As you can see, the symbols are changing down here because every time we change the kick take, the whole group of drums is switching takes as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use this first part for now. And then what we're going to do with the comp tool on. So again, we have the hand tool enabled, the comp tool. We're going to hold alt and then make a cut. And I'm going to do this with the grid on. And if we make a cut, the important thing about this comp tool is if we make a cut with the comp tool, it's going to cut all the takes. So if we do this with the pointer tool, It'll just cut the one. As you can see, it cut all the takes, but it didn't cut the other comps. So we want that comp tool on, and we're going to cut here, just like that. So now, if we want to combine two takes together, we're just going to click the next take. So we got. And as you can hear, it sounds very seamless because he recorded these parts very consistently, just over and over again. So now we can cycle through. Was this take better, or was this take better? With editing, it is good to use your eyes. You can see like this take is a bit less rushed than this one. There's quite a big gap between the overheads and the kick, so the crash and the kick. And we can keep going through these. So it seems like he rushed the cymbal every time, which is normal, like he's a human. So I'm just going to go through and see visually what looks the best. So this one, they look very even, except the whole take is behind, but we'll fix that in the editing phase. So let's hear this.
cool. So that's sounding pretty good. The next major part I'm looking at is this little kick burst here. So we're going to see if there's a bit tighter of a take. We're going to make a cut right here with the comp tool selected. It's going to cut all the takes. Then I'm going to go back to our most recent take here. So he nailed it on this last take, so I might use that for that part. This part's a little bit shaky for me, so what I'm going to do is make another cut here and just try subbing in another take. So that sounds good. It sounds a little bit rushed over here. And you might ask, why don't we just do this where we can slip edit the whole take? Now what you've done is you've taken the same take and then basically duplicated this little section of audio because you've dragged it over. So we're going to get an audible artifact. As you can hear that, especially in the overheads. I'll turn off the click. So that's why we can't do that. So let's go back to that. We can, however, use this because he just played it at a different time so that this crossfade will happen nice and easy. So now I'm going to use the grid a little bit for this. Another great tip for editing drums is going over here to edit preferences. We can go to event display and the grid overlay intensity we can turn up pretty heavy. So what that'll do is make the grid lines appear very strongly on the actual track. So with this off you'll get something like this. As you can see the grids disappeared so I can only see the grid up here which is not very helpful with drum editing. So what I like to do is go to Edit, Preferences, just turn that up to about 75%. Hit Apply, OK, and now we can see the grid everywhere. Super helpful. So now just looking back at these waveforms, this take sounds pretty good. I'm just looking at all the other takes here. So we might sub out this take up here above it. As you can see that it takes very rushed so you can't even hear the kick. Now we're going to go over here. Okay, that sounds really good. I'm just going to maybe s swap back to the final take. And this last kick burst, we're just going to see if there's a tighter take. Looks like this is the best one. And yeah, now that I think it's done, what I'm going to do is just go back here to the start and just hit play and see if we notice any problems. And while I do this final listen through to the comp, I like to turn off the click so I can better hear the transitions between takes. Perfect, I'm happy with that. So you might ask, why didn't we just use the last take? Like primarily we're using that. And the answer to that is to make our lives easier during the editing process. The closer we are with the comp, the faster the edit will be. So now that we have that comped, what I like to do now, so I like to highlight all the tracks and then go to track versions. And then we're gonna hit duplicate version. And now all these tracks are gonna have a copy of one. And now what I like to do is highlight everything and then go to audio advanced, and then delete overlaps. So what that's going to do is take all those top takes and then delete everything else. This stuff at the end I also don't need, so I'm just delete that. But the cool thing about this is if we notice an error and we want to use a different take, we can just highlight all the tracks, hit V1 in the track versions, and then we have our original stuff all right there. So here's the cleaned up version, and then here's the full dirty mess of all the takes. So now that we have it looking pretty clean, what I'll do now is highlight all of them, and then we're going to hit X to crossfade. So what this does is it just fades out the one track as the other one fades in to create a smooth transition. So I'm going to do another final listen through to make sure all those are good. And right now I'm listening for like the symbols to make sure there's no weird gaps. Sounds good. And what you can do if there is a weird artifact in the symbol is maybe you hit it a bit lighter in this take and now it's jumping up in volume because you hit it harder on this take. So what we can do is just grab this crossfade, move it around a bit. We're going to turn off snap, so we're going to hit J on our keyboard. Now we can move this freely. A good rule of thumb is put it right before a kick transient or snare transient, and then it'll hide that difference in cymbal volume. So right there we hear a little artifact. We're going to move that back. There we go, that sounds good. Again, we hear another weird fade. 
So I'm gonna see if I can drag that a bit forward. I drag it, move our cursor forward. Again, I hear a little dip out in the cymbals. If you really pay attention, you can hear that. So again, we're just gonna move this towards the next transient, it tends to help. And you might run into this problem where he rushed it on the previous take, but the next take is a bit delayed. So what we're gonna do is just move it as far as we can. So just right before the previous transient, and then we'll get this. And if that doesn't sound good, then you can always move this way back. And as you can see, it hides it a bit there. So then it's just kind of a matter of what do I like more? Do I like this or do I like this? So let's try this again. So that sounds a lot more natural to me. So let's keep moving on. All right, so that all sounds good to me. We fixed all the joints that connect each take together. Made sure those crossfades were in the right spot. And I don't hear any weird artifacts for the most part, which is always a good sign. So now that we've done this, what we can do is highlight all the tracks. We can go to audio and then hit bounce selection. Now I have a shortcut for this. I just hit control J, my keyboard, and then it's gonna ask, do you wanna replace events? So yes, you can hit replace. It's gonna get rid of all those crossfades so we have a nice even drum part. So you might notice there's some errors once you do this part, that's all good. So I hear a little cymbal cut out. So what I'm gonna do is hit Control Z and then let's go back and see if we can fix that. So I'm gonna move this over. So the main problem here is that he hit the cymbal pretty lightly on this take and then pretty hard on this one. So that sounds a lot better to me than this. And I should also note you can mess around with the length of the crossfade. So it might sound better in some instances to make it really short. That's a lot more transparent in this situation. So when in doubt, just make the crossfade length as short as it can go, basically. So that sounds good to me. Another good rule of thumb is we can take this and make it another stage. So we can hit duplicate version. And what we can do is save this as its own checkpoint as well. We can highlight everything and then hit duplicate version. And then I can just rename these tracks. So we'll go comp and I'll just call this comp crossfade. And then we can call this final comp. So on this final comp, we're just gonna hit control J to bounce, replace. We're gonna let that load. Now we have a clean drum take. Let's listen to it one more time. All right, cool. Everything sounds really good. Now, how do we go about editing it? How do we put it on grid? We want metal to be nice and tight. So we're gonna go ahead and put everything on the grid here. I'm going to show you my process to do that. So before I start to edit these drums, I want you guys to follow along with me. So I've made this final comp version available for download through my Patreon. My Patreon is a one-stop shop for the modern metal producer. There you can find all sorts of presets, samples, mix walkthroughs, and practice stems like these ones. So head on over there if you want to grab these and follow along with me. So there's a few different techniques you can do. If you have Cubase 12, they just added this feature called Phase Coherent Audio Warp, where we can actually edit all the drums based on audio warp positions. So this is the fastest method of editing drums, but it does come at a cost. It does usually come with some small artifacts because we are stretching the drums. But if you're in a pinch and you're just doing this for like a social media post or something, this is really quick because it's only a couple of clicks. So if I wanted to audio warp my drums, what would I do? So the first step you want to do to audio warp your drums is to turn off group editing and the Phase Coherent Audio Warp. And we're just going to double click our kick mic. We're going to go down to hit points. And now what we're going to do is mess with the threshold so that we pick up only the kicks. So we might have to zoom in a bit for this. So this right here is a snare hit. If I solo this. So obviously this is a real drum kit. We have bleed. So if I brought the threshold down too far, it would actually recognize this snare hit as a kick hit. And we don't want that. So we just want to pick a nice even threshold where we're picking up everything but nothing else. I'm thinking around here should be good. And now what do we do? Now we have to go through and manually edit all the hit points. I'm going to hit the edit hit points button and now we can play back each slice. So what we're looking for here is that the hit point is right before the massive peak, which is the transient. We don't want it over here. Technically there are waveforms here, but it's not the actual hit. So the first one sounds good. Now we can just tab to transient through all the hits and how we do that is by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. I'm going to hit the right one and it just brought us to the next hit. That one looks good. 
go to the next one. Yep. Next one. Next one. And you just want to go through all the hits and you might find one that's like way over here. And then you just want to drag the hit point right to where it was right before that massive peak. So prime example right here, we're going to move that hit point over to about here. Keep moving. There we go. We're all done. So we want to zoom out a bit and make sure we didn't miss any now. So these are Tom hits. We don't need to worry about that. And what will make this task easier is if you had good mic placement. So the kick is the loudest thing in the kick mic, which is obviously what we want. It makes it easier to edit. But if you have bad kick placement, maybe it's picking up the snare equally as loud as the kick, in which case it would just be a nightmare to edit because you can't tell what's what. So here's an example of it missing. These kicks are really light because it's a fast burst. So what we're going to do is hold Alt. We're going to be able to insert a hit point. As you see, you'll bring up this pencil tool. Now if we just go to the start of the transient, it'll say lock hit point. And then we just want to left click to add in that hit point. And there we go. So we also need to do it to this hit. Let's go ahead and lock a hit point in. Now what we want to do is just back out of that. And then we're going to repeat that same process for the snare mic. So there's not too many snare hits in this. I'm going to hit edit hit points, turn the threshold up because right now it's picking up everything. And we just wanted to pick up the snare hits. Cool. So let's go through, zoom in. So I like to really zoom in on this. And you'll notice on this, the snare hit starts with the polarity going down. So we want to keep that consistent from hit to hit. So it's going down. Sounds good. I'm going to hit arrow. Now it's going down again. So there might be some instances where it'll pick up the hit marker like this, where the first peak is going up, but that's not what we want. We want everything to be to basically follow the trend. This is a ghost note here, so we want to pay attention to these. This is way off, so we're going to drag that forward. All right, that's it. Now, ghost notes. Let's see if it missed anything. All sounds good. And then this one's kind of a ghost note. And then here we got a little flam. So that looks like it's picking up on the tom. We don't want that. We're going to put that right up to the snare transient. And again, we want this to go down first, so we're going to put it right there. Perfect. All right, so the snare's done. Now we just have to do the toms. This should be pretty easy because there's only a few hits. Bring the threshold up. Just drop it down. That's probably good. So with Tom, the polarity is going down to start. It's going down here. Now here it's going up, so we want to drag that back. All right, so that's done. Moving on to floor high. Bring the threshold up. It's about there. So I'm just dragging the threshold down until it picks up on this hit. We're going to see which way the polarity is going. It's going down. And that works for me. Now this first one looks a bit wonky. I'm just going to drag that forward a bit. And this as well, I'm going to drag back. Now that we've got all the shells mapped out, so what we're going to do now is turn on group editing, turn on phase, coherent audio warp, highlight everything, and then we're going to go to the quantize panel. Now we're going to create some warp markers. We're going to hit audio warp quantize, turn that on. And then we're going to hit create, and then we're going to hit quantize. And then we're going to check our quantize settings. So we have it to 1 16th, which is perfect for this song. This is all in 16th notes. Now say your song had like a triplet fill or something. This would really mess it up if you quantized it to that. So what you'd want to do in that case is just isolate that section and don't quantize that to this value. You just want to chop it like this. Say this is a triplet fill. And then you just want to quantize this section specifically uh, to like 8th note triplets or 16th note triplets so that it lines up. But in this case, we're lucky, it's all in 16th notes. All we gotta do, click one button, and it's done. So let's hear it now. So that sounds pretty good. It's really quick and easy to do. However, since you're stretching the audio, it does seem to create small artifacts. So now I'm gonna show you the way I like to do it. It takes a bit longer, and there's basically no stretching involved, so there's no artifacts. So let's get started with my method. I've just reverted the changes, so we're back to our normal unedited audio. Now what we're going to do is go through that same process. So now we're going to go through that same process of adding the hit markers. So we turned off group editing. We go back into the kick, and we're going to repeat that same process. So hit points, edit hit points. That sounds good. So now what we're going to do is turn back on group editing and then we're going to go to open quantize panel. This time we're going to turn off this little button here, audio warp quantize. 
And now what we're going to do is basically create slices out of these. And we're going to do this by prioritizing. So for this method, I like to prioritize the snare usually, and then prioritize the kick. So before I hit slice, we're going to talk about the range and offset parameters here. So the range is the minimum distance between two hit points. So if there's a really fast fill or something, you'd want to keep this pretty low. And then the offset, I have it minus 20. So this is how far before the actual hit point the event is sliced. So I'll show you what I mean. If I leave that at minus 20 and hit slice, so you didn't cut right on the hit point. We cut a bit before it, which makes it a lot easier to crossfade. So I'd recommend doing 40 and minus 20. So now that we've sliced it, let's hit quantize. Now I just moved everything to the grid and let's hear it back. It's going to sound horrible because there's going to be a bunch of gaps everywhere. So prime example of a mistake right here. This should be set to 30 second notes for that part. So what we can do is take this piece by piece. Instead of highlighting the whole thing, let's go back through, highlight all the 16th notes. So let's do to about here. And then I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard. It's going to quantize everything. So it sounds good. So now I'm going to change the grid to what he's playing right now. So that'll be 16th note triplets. And we're just going to drag each kick to the right spot. So now we got... So that sounds good. All right, cool. Now we can set it back to 16th notes. And let's highlight a big chunk. And hit Q. It's going to quantize it all. So right here, let's see what's going on. Okay, so move this part too far forward. So we're going to highlight everything except that. Hit Q. So right now there's no kick transient, so it's kind of not knowing what to do. So we're just going to leave it. We're not going to quantize it and then it messes it up like this. We're just going to leave it. So now let's keep going forward. We got... So these are triplets again. So what I'm doing is just grabbing each individual block and dragging it into the correct position. Now this kick should be a bit farther over. So now I want to go back to 16th note grid. Now I want to keep going through, and I think the rest is 16th notes, so we're just going to highlight a big chunk, quantize. Again, I'm pressing Q on my keyboard for that. We can quantize these hat hits a bit. And again, it made a bunch of chunks here, but it's basically just the hi-hat ring out. So if I were to quantize this, it would just mess it up completely. It's better to just leave these alone. And lastly, we have this little kick flurry thing. Uh, so these, I believe, are 16th note triplets. So we can go ahead and drag these to the beat. Again, this little grid overlay feature is super helpful for this. That sounds good. This is getting a bit cut off, so I'm just going to drag that back a little bit farther, I think. Uh, I'm going to hit J on my keyboard to turn off snap and drag that back a bit. Same with this. And then I'm going to turn J back on. J needs to be on to be able to snap to the grid like this. So here we do have a bit of a flam with the tom, so this is a little bit tricky. We want to basically back this up by ear. I'm going to turn off J again. So let's line the floor tom transient up to the grid. So it'll be about there. And that sounds good to me. So our drums are added. It sounds good, except there's holes everywhere in the performance. This is where our friend, the crossfade tool comes in handy. So in the same quantize panel, we got a little crossfade section at the bottom here. We're going to put that to work right now. We're going to highlight a chunk and then we're going to hit crossfade. And now we're going to adjust the length. So I just basically like to make it as small as it can go, like seven or five. And like magic, it just did that whole section nice and easy. So we're going to keep going through, crossfade, drag it down to about seven or five. Sounded good so far. I like to do this in small trunks because the odd time and error can happen and then it's just easier to fix it. So I'm going to highlight another chunk, hit crossfade. Okay, so right here, I hear a problem. I hear the cymbals kind of fluttering, and the reason for this can be a few things. It's usually caused by the crossfade, so I can hear one right here. I'm just going to move that crossfade over a bit. Let's see how that sounds. 
still hear it. Let's try moving it back. I'm not really liking this too much, so I'm just going to revert the whole part and grab a chunk and crossfade. Except we're going to just bring it way down to about two. And that pretty much got rid of everything. So I did hear a little glitch here. So simple fix for this. We can just drag this floor tom high over. Sounds good. Now I'm going to take a leap of faith and just grab the rest of it. Hit crossfade and then we'll just drag it down to the length of two. All right, that sounds good. Now these kicks got a bit jumbled here. So this is a really common problem you'll run into. Basically what happened was this kick's on time and this next kick's on time. Except this kick is in this audio waveform and got slip edited over. So all we have to do to fix this is drag the crossfade and now it's disappeared. So again, just to reiterate, what's happening is this kick is doubled up. And the reason it's doubled up is because this kick's on time at the sacrifice of also bringing this one. So we just need to change the crossfade time. So what we're going to do is highlight the crossfade and just drag it over. And as you can see, if you go too far, it'll double up again the other way. So you just want to bring it back and boom, it's gone. So now let's hear it. Sounds pretty good. Visually, I can see that happening again right here. I'm just going to drag this kick over. And if you go too far, you'll see the next one. So you just want it to be right in the middle. All right, so I think we're done here. Let's give it a full listen through and let's fix any more problems we hear. So I can see a bit of a double hit happening here. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Awesome. So this sounds really good to me. All the crossfades are set. All the drums are on time. We've comped it. It sounds great. How do we clean this up a bit more? What we can do is highlight all the tracks, hit duplicate version, and then we can call this final edit. And now what we can do is highlight all this, hit control J to bounce selection. And there we go. And shut this quantize panel. We have fully edited drums. As you can see, it's nice and tight to the grid. Transient is bang on time. And we have no artifact. So just before I wrap up, I just want to reiterate that you can't get away with bad drum takes. You really want to get it right at the source. So right now, I just want to show you the visual difference between the final comp, so unedited, and the final edit. So here's the unedited, and now here's the edited. Unedited, edited. So you just see the waveforms just shift a little bit, and that's what you want. You want to get it as close as possible during tracking, and then as close as possible during the comp, and then just do a tiny bit of editing. The less edits you have to do, the less artifacts you'll run into, and ultimately the less time you'll spend doing it. So with that being said, I'm just going to give these drums a quick mix so we can do a final before and after. Here's the raw unedited drums. Here's the final edited drums with the song. Now let's hear the final mixed version. <laughs> <laughs> 